Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Health Podcast, episode 149. Jesse Chapp is here with Marnie Wasserman, and we are here each and every week to take your health to the next level. Today, our featured guest is Jen Sincero. She is the number one New York Times bestselling author of the book, You Are a Badass. And today marks the day that her new book hit shelves, You Are a Badass at Making Money. And the really important part of the title is actually the subtitle, Master the Mindset of Wealth. So this book isn't like a lot of the other finance books out there talking about how to save money, different investments. This is all about building yourself up as a person. And in turn, this is going to lead to yourself making money and bringing all kinds of great opportunities to you. So really different perspective. This is a great interview. You guys are going to hear through Jen's energy and everything she brings to this conversation that she hustled and she is truly a badass. I'm so inspired after this episode and I'm excited to hear what you guys think. So of course, we got another amazing review. Thank you guys for all the awesome love you're sending our way. So this is a five-star review from Starting My Health Journey from Canada and it's titled Informative and Inspirational. I'm just starting on my health journey and have just discovered this wonderfully informative show that truly does meet its listeners at whatever part of their journey they are at. Educational, clarifying, and non-judgmental, and sound information on healthy living. Thanks for helping the light bulb to go off in my head. Well, we're very excited to hear that. We love when new ideas and new healthy routines get implemented into your lives, so we're excited to hear how this continues to go. Thank you guys so much for all your awesome love coming our way, and don't stop. So for the listeners out there who haven't taken the time yet to leave us a review in iTunes, it's super easy to do. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash iTunes. Only takes a minute. If you don't want to write anything, you can just leave a rating. It just takes two seconds. Again, thank you guys. We really appreciate all the feedback. So now a shout out to our show sponsor, Sun Warrior. And today I am going to talk about a smoothie that my brother has been making that is actually without any fruit. So using the Warrior Blend, vanilla or natural, blending that with some ice, almond butter, and even some coconut milk. Very simple if you want to sweeten it up, maybe some stevia. So very light, very clean. So using the power of just the protein. So try that out. Get some Warrior Blend. Make a simple smoothie, high in fat, just using ice and coconut milk, and it's delicious. So I hope you guys give that a try, and you'll love it. So as a listener of our show, you get 10% off all your Sun Warrior products, including Warrior Blend Protein. Super easy to take advantage. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash SW. And for listeners in the US and Canada, bundle your order together, spend $100 or more, and you get free shipping. Go and take advantage of these amazing products right now. So now a shout out to our other show sponsor, Core Chair. This ergonomical chair is so comfortable, guys. And in addition to it being so comfortable, you're getting that motion in during the day. So you're getting subtle little micro motions that are going to help your body, help your back, help your brain. You're just going to feel so good. So if you haven't had a chance to try it out, I highly encourage you to get your hands on it. There's no risk. You can return it if you need to, but you won't want to. It is such an incredible chair that Jesse and I use day in, day out. Honestly, it's hard at the end of the day to get us off the chair and we feel so good because we've moved all day. We haven't been sitting stagnant. So give a core chair a try. You will not look back and you will never want to go back to a regular chair again. And as a listener of our show, you get a special discount on your core chair. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash core chair to find out the details. For listeners in North America, you get free shipping. These chairs are amazing. Go and check them out right now. Okay, now back to Jen and some of the highlights from today's show. We talk about universal intelligence and how to use it to our advantage. We get into surrounding yourself with other people who are kicking ass. Jen shares how standing confidently will lead to your mind-following suit. Jen shares an incredible story of how she borrowed $85,000 from a friend to get some mentoring. She describes how it's not just doing what you love and the money will follow. You need to have a plan in there how to monetize. And we also get into breaking free and becoming a badass. So much great stuff in this one. You guys are going to love it. Without further ado, here we go with Jen Sincero. Hi, Jen. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, we're excited to have you. And congrats on the new book. You are a badass at making money. It is funny. It is great. So tell us about the approach in this book. We love your no-nonsense humor approach. So What got you doing this? Is this who you are or is this kind of the approach you wanted to take? I know you did this with your last book too. Um, Well, I just sort of feel that 
it, it's sort of like the placebo of putting sugar coating on topics that are usually kind of boring. <laughs> you know, I did it with You Are a Badass with the self-help genre. And I feel like with money, which is often such a traumatic topic for a lot of people to make it funny and make it, you know, have stories in it and also give some really hardcore, helpful advice is a good combination. Well, Jen, you said you knew zero things about making money until you're in your 40s. Now you're writing a book on mastering the mindset of wealth. How did this 180 occur? It occurred because I made the decision to not be clueless about money anymore, which I think is such an important and simple point. Money is such a controversial topic in our society. And, you know, to say I'm going to focus on making money to say that out loud will raise many eyebrows, you know, so if you're struggling with money, you have to make the concerted effort to focus on it and take steps towards making it and not be ashamed of it and give yourself permission to do it. And I think that that is a bigger deal than most people realize. So you talk about in the book how we're raised to think that we work hard, we make money in return. And at times this is true, but you also talk about the secret is taking huge uncomfy risks. So can you start off here by sharing a story of a time in your life when you took a big risk? Sure. So I was living in a converted garage in my 40s and I woke up one day and was like, I am going to die in this garage if I don't get my act together soon. So when I made that decision to focus on making money, suddenly all of these other opportunities that were around me the whole time became possibilities instead of things that I was like, there is no way in hell I am doing that. And so one of these things was I met a coach who specialized in helping women with their finances. And she cost basically one quarter of my annual income to work with her. And I was already in debt. And so in the old days, I would have been like, as if, have a nice day. But because I had made the decision to make money and I realized, just knew in my heart that she could help me, I went deeper into debt and paid her and worked with her and did every single thing she told me to do and ended up tripling my income in three months. But that uncomfy leap never would have happened if I hadn't made the decision. Well, what I love about your approach too is that it's all about the mindset. It's not just about strategies, how we can make more money, but when you get into that place of belief and knowing that you can, and I know this is carried through the whole theme of the book, but why is mindset so important when it comes to receiving this abundance that we call money? Because we tend to think that it's all about actions to take. And, you know, as you just said, work hard and you make a lot of money is what we're taught. But if you focus on your mindset instead, you can make so much more money so much more easily because it isn't necessarily about what you're doing. It's about who you're being. And so instead of just working hard at what you know how to do, when you expand your mindset, you open yourself up to opportunities that are scary and outside of your comfort zone, but that can be 10 times more lucrative. So it's about working smart. It's not about working hard necessarily. Well, digging into mindset, let's talk about beliefs. And these end up becoming our experiences. And you say that if you believe money is evil or difficult to make, our bank account is going to suffer. Can you just give us an example of where your beliefs were at the time before you made the switch and started actually making money? Yeah. So my main limiting beliefs around money were, first of all, that I had no idea how to make it. I also believed that money was for other people somehow, but not for me. It was like I would look at somebody who had a mansion and a yacht, and I would literally feel like they were a different species than me, that that was just completely out of the realm of my reality. Not that I necessarily want a mansion and a yacht, but that availability of that version of life was just not available to me. And the third thing that I realized, and this was a huge game changer for me, and this is a very common one that a lot of people have in some form, is that if I made lots of money and got very successful, I'd outshine my parents, especially my father, who, you know, one of the ways he showed me he loved me was to give me 20 bucks or write me a check for $100. I, deep down, unbeknownst to myself, thought that if I got successful, my father wouldn't be able to show me that he loved me anymore. And I stopped myself from making money my whole life because I didn't want to hurt him. So when I realized that that was going on, it came to me sort of a long story, but I realized that I had this subconscious belief by pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. And it was when I was signing up to work with a certain coach and it cost insane amounts of money. And because I was considering this as a real possibility, it shifted something in my brain and this subconscious belief just came out of the wreckage and 
showed itself to me. And once I saw that that's what I had going on, I could start to diffuse it. But I never would have seen it or realized it if I didn't start taking leaps into the unknown over and over and over. So Jen, how does somebody go about assessing where their current beliefs are at at this time? Uh, One of the ways is to decide to become aware of your thoughts and words. We tend to sort of go through life on autopilot. When you start doing the work and reading books like mine and all the millions of other great books out there and going to seminars and listening to shows like this, you can make the choice to stop and really look at what you're thinking and saying and then rewriting those beliefs. Another exercise that I love is to write a letter to money. I put this exercise in my book where you sit down and you treat money like a person and you write a letter to it and tell it how you feel about it. And for me personally, this was one of the most revealing and sobering exercises I've ever done because I realized what a total freak show I had going on. You know, I loved money and I felt dirty admitting that, but I wanted more of it and I didn't trust it. And I was just so back and forth. I've had clients who've had great success with this exercise also. So say somebody realizes that they're having these toxic beliefs, how do they go about changing them? What I gather from your book is they're really deeply ingrained and it's really not easy to make that switch. Well... But it's not that hard either. It's really when you notice it and if you're dedicated, it's like anything else, like you just got to keep showing up and showing up. So for example, my biggest mantra basically was I can't afford it. I answered, I can't afford it to pretty much everything somebody told me. And when I decided to do the work, I was like, all right, that's not getting me anywhere. And something that's really important to realize is if you keep saying I can't afford it, what you focus on, you create more of. So if that is your belief and that's what you're hanging your identity on, you will have no lack of proof that that is truth, right? So if I keep saying I can't afford it, I'll keep noticing how empty my bank account is. I'll see how crappy my apartment is. I'll keep looking for things to prove that. When I shifted my mantra to money's all around me and I'm ready to receive it, it shifted how I viewed the world and what I was focusing on. So now I was looking for opportunities. I was looking at the money I did have and being grateful for it instead of the money I didn't have and freaking out about it. So when you become aware of what your thoughts and beliefs and words are, you change them to something else that's got some energetic charge to it and you keep repeating it over and over and you catch yourself every time you say the old one and you put the new one in and you breathe into it and you feel it and you become available for all of the new insights that come with that. So it really is just a choice. And I think the hard part, quote unquote, is that you're automatically programmed to do the old way. So it's just repetition. You just keep saying it over and over and over and pretty soon that becomes the new normal. And I don't think people realize that there's a vibration to money. Every thought, every belief has a vibration and we're putting that energy out there. And when we can shift that, and I know you really bring this into the book because you're a big believer in, you know, the belief system and how that changes everything. And I think we need to look at that energy exchange that we have with that. So, you know, what are some of the first steps that maybe someone can take to just really make some of those initial changes? to their belief about, you know, I know maybe going back in time. And as you said, writing things down, is there anything else that someone can do? Yeah. Gratitude is a big one. Becoming really grateful for money because again, it's such a loaded topic. And even though most people are like, give me as much money as you want, I'll take it all day long. We've all got these weird subconscious beliefs. So when you become grateful to money and practice that again, it's about creating a new rut and you're constantly Every time you receive it, I don't care if it's five cents, just being like, I just made some money. Thank you. I love this piece of money. Looking around you and realizing all of the beautiful things that money does for you and for other people and for the earth and just taking the time to really become aware. A lot of people do gratitude lists. At the end of the day, they write down all the things they're grateful for. And if you are focusing on making money, it's a great idea to do that for money. Just take the time to write five things down every single night that you're grateful to money for. Awesome. And I want to talk about wealth. So, you know, when people hear the word wealth, they may think about how much money is in my account. And when I'm wealthy, I'm going to be a billionaire. But you have a different approach to wealth. And I think it's really worth mentioning right now. So let's talk about wealth in its holistic sense. Well, you know, wealth is an interesting word. 
You can have a wealth of friends. You can have a wealth of knowledge. It's sort of an all encompassing thing. And it's also a very personal thing. You know, what you may feel is your personal wealth is very different than mine. You know, we're all unique creatures and we're all given different desires. And I think it's so important to get clear on what you desire and what's in your heart. And when it comes to money, getting clear on what's really important to you. What do you want to spend your money on? You know, not everybody wants to live a big fancy life and be on television and whatever. I mean, maybe you want to stay at home and raise some great kids in a nice house. It all counts. That's why it's so important to spend some time alone and getting quiet and getting in touch with your intuition and finding out what really lights you up, not what you think you should do or what someone else is doing. But figuring out what lights you up, figuring out how much it will cost because everything costs something and going out and demanding of yourself and the universe that you create that money. Let's stick on that universe thing for a minute. This is a big theme running through the book. And you talk about how we need to harness this power to become wealthy. What is the universal intelligence and how do we begin to start using it to our advantage? So we are on a planet that is very organized and runs very systematically. If you look at the way Mother Nature operates, it is a full-blown miracle. You know, everything has a purpose. Everything has a desire. You know, the tree grows from the seed to the sapling to the great tree, and then it sprouts stuff and drops things on our yards, and it you know starts the cycle all over again. And so we are part of that cycle. And I don't necessarily believe a pre-programmed fate that we all have, but there is a force bigger than ourselves at play in our lives. And it's running through all of us. We're all part of the same energetic. And when you pull back from what many people call your monkey mind and all the you know, day-to-day worries and the stress and the freaking out, And you get quiet and meditate, which is why we're always screaming and yelling about meditation. You can tap into this feeling of this source energy that is you. It's who you really are outside of your physical body. And this is the place where your desires come to you, where your brilliant ideas come to you. I mean, think about it. Like, where do those ideas come from that pop into your mind? You know, they come from somewhere. Most creatures in nature rely on their intuition all the time for their survival, for their day-to-day. And human beings have this lovely capacity to have conscious thought. And I don't want to brag on conscious thought because it's awesome, but it also gets in our way a lot. And we tend to value it over our intuition. And meanwhile, the intuitive part of ourselves is so powerful. And it is this connection with this source energy that will guide us in such huge and profound ways. And by the way, when you do take these uncomfy leaps to transform your life, it's usually an intuitive hit that you get because your higher self understands that you're totally capable of doing these things that scare the living crap out of you. So it's sending you a message. And when you get that message, you got to act on it right away because all your excuses and fears and worries and all the stuff that's going on in your conscious mind will try and stop you. But if we can stay connected to our intuition and follow that through life, we can be extremely badass. And I think it's important to point out that it's not always going to come as planned. So it's important to have a good plan and to follow that towards success. But we want to be open to the different things that come at us as we're on that pathway. Do you want to just explain how that's going to happen as we're on our path? Sure. And so one of the most common ways people stop themselves is they feel like they're like, okay, I'm ready to make money. I I just don't know how. So if you think about it, you know how to do everything you're doing right now. And you got to the level that you're at by doing everything that you know how to do. So if you want to go to a completely different financial level, you don't know how to do it yet because you've never done it before. So waiting until you know how is completely anti-productive. You'll never start. So you do what you know how to do. You certainly have to work. You absolutely have to do things and take action and do work and you do whatever you know how to do and then trust that the universe will show you the next step you need to take that you've probably never taken before and that you've probably never thought of. Well, what I like is that you emphasize getting really clear and really specific. So you can get as specific as you want down to the very last detail and you can lay it all out. 
And that's where, you know, the universe will deliver maybe in exactly that way or maybe in a different way. I know you told a story in your book of how you wanted to make, you know, that money in a week, but you ended up making it in two days. It delivered and it over delivered because you believed in it. Right. So can you just share that story and maybe just talk a little bit more about that? Sure. When I very first hired that coach I talked about that cost me a quarter of my income, she really wanted to blast me out of my comfort zone and my preconceived notions of what I was able to make. Because remember, I was clinging to that belief that money was for other people and not for me. So we had just started my online business where I was coaching writers on writing their book proposals and it was going good. But she was like, all right how much money do you think you could make in a week with your business if you just busted your ass? And she goes, I want to get an intuitive hit and just tell me the first number that comes to your mind. So I think I had made maybe $2,000 a week on like my best week. So I was like, all right, maybe I could make five grand in one week if I really hauled ass. And she was like, okay, great. So $5,000 is your number. Now double it. So she made me double that number. So now I was going to make $10,000 in one week, which was bananas. But I was hell bent to change my life. So I was like, all right, we make $10,000 in one week. And we figured out that it would be to pay off my credit card debt because I hated credit card debt. I had a million mantras going that this was going to happen. I put together a bunch of coaching packages for book proposal classes. That's how I was going to do it. And I also decided that I was going to do it in two days instead of one week because I knew myself And I would lose steam and I would let my excuses seep in. And if it didn't happen right away, I'd get lazy. And I was like, I've got to make this happen. And I've got to maintain this energy and this belief and this no nonsenseness until this money comes in. So 10 grand in two days was my goal. And as I was on the phone with her, I thought about, it was my first life coaching client that I'd had a year prior and I hadn't worked with him in a year and I hadn't heard from him in a year. And I was charging him like $25 an hour when I was coaching him at the time. And I was like, huh, maybe I should reach out to that guy and see if I can sell him a life coaching package. And as the words were coming out of my mouth, an email came into my inbox and I'm still on the phone with my coach from this guy. And he's like, I'm ready to work with you again. Name your price. And so, I mean, this still makes my hair stand up. So anyway, we put together a coaching package for him that was $12,000. Now this was like, I can't even do this kind of math, but it was like at least eight or 10 times what I had been charging him per hour. And I was terrified to send him this package. You know, all my fears about being silly and being greedy and being a money monger and all that came up. But I also knew that I was a way better coach and that I was now at this new level energetically with money where I was not screwing around anymore and I was playing a whole bigger game. And so I sent him that price and that package and he took it in three seconds and was ready to go. And then I sold another coaching package of my book proposal stuff and made 15 grand. But one thing I do want to point out with this is specifics are critical because you can't get your energy around vagueness. So that's why like making $10,000 was exciting to me. But paying off my credit cards with that $10,000 got me out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to do the work I needed to do. And also becoming the kind of person who could make $10,000 in two days was even more exciting to me. So those specifics are what really got me going. And then the specifics of how to do it were super important. But this whole concept of surrender is what we're talking about when it's releasing the need for the how. So You put it out there, you're serious as hell about it. And then you also have to have this leaning back and this knowing that there's a bigger force out there than you who knows better than you about this new level and that will deliver you the how. So you put all your energy, but you keep space and keep a breath in there for this new thing to come in via surrender. And what's so crazy is that it seems so hard you know, you're thinking so much about it. How am I going to do this? Like, where is this money going to come from? I don't understand. And then you just stop and then it gets figured out for you. So to someone listening to this right now who feels like, okay, you know what? I can do this. I can manifest this. What are some, maybe some starting points, some simple strategies to get someone started to really maybe make some shifts in their life in a real way? Start by writing down why you're so excited to make money. You know, what would really impact your life in such a positive and exciting way? And what would make you feel empowered? What kind of money could you bring in that would make you feel the way I felt like I am somebody who can make 10 grand in two days, damn it. Like that had true meaning and excitement for me. So get clear on the amount and what it's for. 
And, you know, and I'm all for miracles, but if you are making 80 grand a year and you decide I'm going to make $2 million in the next three days, like you might want to be a bit more easy on yourself, but definitely outside your comfort zone, but something that's meaningful and terrifying and that you're totally going to do. So get specific about the why and the how. I am a huge believer in surrounding yourself with other people who are kicking ass. So if you can find somebody to partner up with either as a mentor, if you can find a good life coach, having somebody who's at the level you want to be at, it's like playing tennis with somebody who's better than you, is going to up your game massively and also keep your focus solid on what's possible as opposed to when we hang out with our friends who are scraping by and who aren't doing the work and who keep bringing our focus back to how broke we are, how hard everything is and all that stuff. So those are two great ways to start. And Jen, you also talk about how not just the people in our lives, how they matter, but our environment matters too. And you give an example in the book where you could go and test drive the car your dreams on a weekly basis and put yourself in that environment and make that part of the manifestation. So can you talk about how important our environment is as well? Sure, because we're energetic creatures. Again, it's that energy. We are motivated by emotions. You know, think about it. Like you can have all the rational thoughts in your head that you want, especially like with dating, right? You see somebody who's the wrongest person on earth, but if you're emotional about that person, you're going to go for it anyway. So it's like getting your emotions involved is the smartest thing you can do. So thinking about the car you want is great. Sitting in it is way more emotional and exciting and visceral. So your environment greatly impacts your energy. So when I was living in the converted garage, it wasn't fancy, but I cleaned it up as best I could, you know, with what I could afford and painted it and made a point of just making it look pretty and smelling nice and blah, blah, blah. I would tape up pictures of places that I wanted to live in. I went and sat in the car I wanted to buy all the time, you know, and your environment is going to affect your energy. So figure out a way what specific things you can do to raise your energy on a daily basis. It's got to be on a daily basis, guys. You can't just do it once and hope it sticks. Well, a couple other tools you talk about in the book to get your mindset right around money are meditation, which you touched on earlier, and visualization, which again, ties into this whole example I just gave of the car. This is kind of like visualization on steroids where you're putting yourself right into the actual position you want to be in. But let's talk about them one at a time, starting with meditation. How has this practice helped you over the years? It keeps me connected to my smarter and larger self. And even if I just do it for five minutes a day, it's like a muscle. So it keeps that muscle of my intuitive knowledge so much stronger. And I'm sure most people have had this experience where one night you're walking out of your house and you look up and you see the stars and you're just blown away. And you're like, oh my God, that's right. I'm on a planet in outer space. And those are stars that are probably gone by now. And this is a freaking mind boggling miracle. And you're suddenly in a completely new awareness of your reality. So that's what meditation does is it reminds you on a daily basis that there is a much bigger reality out there for you and that you are infinitely powerful. So taking the time to remember that and pull yourself out of the day-to-day minutia strengthens your confidence. It strengthens the way that you're able to visualize what's possible for you, playing a much bigger game in general. Let's talk about confidence. This is really big. You get into detail on this and how we can really embody this feeling of not being judged by others and not putting ourselves down and maybe not being guilty about money. How can we embody confidence in a way that's going to help us really get connected to making more money? So meditation, for sure. You know, it's just, it's like any other muscle building thing. We're all born confident. Babies don't give a crap what you think about them. They don't sit around and think that they're too fat or they're too stupid, you know? We come onto the planet as a beautiful, loving creature and a confident creature, and we learn to not be confident and to compare ourselves to others and to judge. I give a couple just really brass tacks kind of tricks in the book, but one of them is if you sit up straight and you walk tall and you stick your chest out, if you physically embody how a confident person holds themselves, 
your mind will follow suit. I mean, you can feel, again, we're energetic creatures. You can feel the energy. Like if you slump down right now and, you know, breathe really shallowly, you feel a certain way. And if you sit up straight and take a nice deep breath, you literally feel raised up and more confident. So just paying attention to your physicality is a really great, easy first step on getting more confident. Another trick is to take baby steps. So do little things every day that push you outside of your comfort zone. It's like when you start lifting weights, you don't start with the real heavy ones at first. You sort of add a couple pounds each week or whatever. So that's what this is. Just keep adding things that you're scared to do, whether it's just like going up and saying hello to a stranger in the supermarket or you know, raising your rates $5 or whatever it is, but taking those baby steps will start to strengthen that muscle and you just keep pushing into bigger and bigger and bigger things. And before you know it, you're a much more confident person. And what do you say to the person that's had failures or setbacks and, you know, keeps getting batted down and is feeling depleted? How do we change the mindset to realizing that these are all learning experiences that can actually build them up stronger? Yeah, I say congratulations. You're out there, you're learning and you're in the game. I have a friend who is in her 50s. She used to be a really successful television writer making tons and tons of money. And her show got canceled and she has not been, she lost her agent. She hasn't been able to get writing work for over 10 years. She's been working bagging groceries. And man, she just got one of the most powerful agents in Hollywood this week. And I nearly fell over because in this world, there's so many, you know, she's older, she's a woman, Hollywood is so judgmental on both of those things. And most people would have given up, but she kept going. And, you know, when I was interviewing, when I was a journalist back in the day, I interviewed a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of successful entrepreneurs. And the thing that they credited as their number one key to success was tenacity. So staying in the game and not giving up until you get there. And, you know, If you're going to be successful, you're going to have a lot of failures. Nobody gets to the top of the mountain without falling on their face over and over again. So if you're feeling depleted, take time and regenerate and get some rest. It's really important to pay attention to your physical self, but just know that these failures are part of the game and they're badges of honor. And if it makes you feel better, read biographies of really successful people and see how many times they completely screwed it up. Part of achieving the wealth that we deserve is having faith. And you talk about the importance of this in the book. Can you start off by defining what do you mean by faith? Faith is believing in something, even though you not only have never seen it proven to you before, but you also may have proof that it's impossible. I had to have faith that I could make money, even though not only had I never made lots of money before, but I had a lifetime of proof that I sucked at it but I had faith that I could do it anyway. And I love this story in your book. And for me, I think this is a great example of faith where you actually went and borrowed $85,000 from a friend of yours to get one-on-one coaching with a mentor of your dreams. So can you talk about this situation and share the story? Because I just really found it powerful. That was by far one of the most terrifying things I ever did because that kind of money to me at the time, I mean, that was like, a down payment on a house money. That was serious money. And I had to ask this person who knew nothing about life coaching. And this was also back in the day when life coaching was just sort of becoming this new thing. It was very questionable. It was very snake oil salesy. A lot of people thought it was just a complete hoax. And I believed in it thoroughly. And, you know, obviously thoroughly enough to want to pay for coaching at the level I wanted to pay for it at. I had made the decision again, that damn decision came up again. And I met a coach who I wanted to work with. And that was their price tag. And I was just devastated. Like, because I had made the decision, there was no turning back. That's what the decision means. So I was like, great. Now I got to come up with $85,000. And by the way, this was the decision that I was talking about earlier when I had that realization that I was going to basically stab my father in the heart by making money. When I allowed myself to entertain the thought that I, Jen Sincero, totally broke person, could manifest $85,000 to take this coaching program, it brought up all that deep-seated terror in me about my dad. But anyway, I had faith that I could get this money and that if I took this coaching program, I would do beautifully and make that money back and then some and become a much bigger player. And I got to say, working with this coach 
completely transformed my life. I was ready to transform and I did so many terrifying things, but it was a total, total game changer. And I am so glad that I had the guts to hop on a plane that night. Again, like the second you think of the most terrifying thing you can do, you got to do it instantaneously or else you will talk yourself out of it. So I thought of this person, I knew they would look at me like I had three heads but I got on a plane that night, flew to their doorstep. It was really awkward because they're like, what the hell are you doing here? And I talked to them and they were terrified of that kind of money. They had no idea what I was talking about. But at the bottom line, they really believed in me and they loaned it to me and it changed my life. Well, what I like about this story is that it's creative and it shows that there's other ways to obtain money than working hard or taking on another job. Not that all friends or people in your life are just going to have a spare 85 grand to give you. But it just shows that there's other ways because people have a lot of fears around money and making money and thinking that they have to grind themselves to the ground just to make an extra buck. So what are some other ways that people can let go of this negative relationship with money and start being creative like you did and being open to the possibilities that are out there to obtain more money? I think getting clear on the fact that it is a mindset. So I've worked with clients who are like, well, I'd love to take out a loan to start my business, but I don't have it. And then if you reframe it, you're like, well, if I put a gun to your head and said, you have to come up with this money by tomorrow, or I'm going to pull the trigger, would you find it? And then suddenly you get a hell of a lot more creative. That's when you start to think, okay, who could I borrow this from? And not just people who are easy and nice and have $85,000 lying around. It's like, Who can I ask who I'm terrified to ask who's probably going to think I'm completely insane? Could I take out a loan that scares the living crap out of me? Could I sell something to make this money? Is there something I could do with my already existing business that I could make this money? Could I double my rates? You know, suddenly there's all these options that were completely discredited before. And Jen, I think a big thing for a lot of people is getting out of denial about their current financial situation. And you share in the book how you actually got to the point when you weren't sure what you were bringing in monthly. And you, I guess jokingly, but maybe not so much, at the end of the month, we're crossing your fingers, hoping that the phone would still be connected. So you just, at that point, were not in a position where you knew your full financial situation. And I think this is just super, super common. So what do you say to the person right now? They're not really aware what's going on. They're afraid to dig in. How important is this to get in there and check things out? You have to realize you're having a relationship with money. It's like anything else. And if you treated a person the way that you treat money, you probably wouldn't be very good friends because you have to pay attention to money. You have to nurture it. You have to make space for it by opening up savings accounts and knowing and being excited when it comes into your account and appreciating it. And, you know, what you focus on, you create more of. And if you are in total denial about your money, you're completely disconnected from this thing that you say you want really badly. There's a total disconnect between what you say you desire and the way that you're behaving. So it's like going on a diet, right? Like you wouldn't just be like, I want to lose some weight, but I don't want to look at anything about that. I'm too food and dieting and exercise freak me out. So I'm not going to look at it, but I totally want to lose some weight. If you want to lose weight, you would buy some healthy food. You'd get an exercise program down. You'd like get a workout buddy. You'd buy clothes that you can work out in. Like you do some specific things. If you want to make money, you got to look at exactly what you've got coming in, what you're doing with it, how you're saving it, how you're spending it, how you're going to bring in more and just be in alignment in it and aware of it because it's not going to happen just with fairy dust and waking up one day and being like, cool, I'm rich now. (laughs) So let's talk about saving and spending. So when we're saving money, we're coming from a place of fear of not having enough. I got to hold out for a rainy day. And when we're overspending, we're maybe thinking, you know, I've just got endless amounts of money, but then we're just always scraping by. So how can we create this healthy flow and realize that, you know, money comes and goes. And as you said, we need to create this relationship because it is a partnership, so to speak, but trusting that there's always more there and making it this healthy experience. So what's the balance between saving and spending? I'm glad you brought this up because I'm a huge believer in saving and it's the energy with which you do both of these things. So saving and quote unquote overspending can be two totally different things depending on who you're being in it. So when you put money aside and you save it, 
with joy and knowledge that you're in the flow and that more is coming. But it's like, yeah, I'm going to put it away because I like to have some padding and I'm going to want, you know, I'd like to have stuff for my future, but I'm not putting it away and not spending it and closing myself off from the flow because there isn't any more coming in and because I don't think I can make more and I'm freaked out. So those are two totally different energies with the saving. And then the overspending, if you're in denial, like we just talked about, like not looking about what you're making or what you need, and you're just going out and buying a bunch of shoes and taking all your friends out for dinner every night and spending money you do not have that way, recklessly, that's being in denial again about money. However, if you do it the way that we were talking about with faith and purpose and intention and going out on a limb where it's like, okay, you know, I did it with my first nice car. I bought an Audi before I could really afford it, but I did it. Now that could be a very irresponsible and reckless thing to do, but it was much more of an investment in myself and in my faith that I was like, all right, I'm buying this nice car. I want to feel confident and like this person who could own a car like this. I love to drive. So for me, like having a car that went really fast with a great stereo system that was comfortable had great meaning to me. And so when I bought it, I demanded of myself that I raise my rates and that I raise my income and that I pay that damn thing off within a certain amount of time. And I was hell bent and not screwing around. And I did pay that off. That's a very different energy than if I just gone out and blown money on the car and didn't really think about it and was in denial about it. So it's all about connecting to the energy of how you're behaving and getting into the flow with money by shifting your focus on how you're looking at it, by being grateful, by having faith, by looking at all the ways that you've already brought money in and looking for all the new opportunities that you can bring it in with. So it's all the stuff we've been talking about, getting into that mindset and then spending and saving as a much more highly evolved individual. Okay. So I want to talk about how we can make money by doing things that we love how do we find ways to still express ourselves or invest in things that, you know, bring us to a higher being, a higher state so that we can actually feel connected to the money that we're making and feeling good about ourselves? Here you are. You're an entrepreneur. You're now aligned with everything that you are doing that makes you tick. So if someone feels that they can't do that, maybe they're in a job right now. Let's say someone's in a nine to five job and they don't love it. They're not happy. They're maybe making money enough to get by and, and live by. But how can they maybe start to find ways to love that even more to either make more money or if, do they need to go outside their job, maybe have something on the side? So how can they feel really good about the money that they're making, that they're doing something they love? Well, if you're at a job that you don't love, you know, unless there's a way that you can change it, or if there's another job in that company that you can go to that speaks more to who you truly are, you got to quit because you've got one life on earth and you do not want to spend it spending the majority of your time doing something you hate. So figure out ways to, to morph it so it turns into something that you love or find another similar job that lights you up way more. But sticking around for that is not an option. However, sticking around with that job until you create another source of income that's much more in alignment with who you are is awesome. So in that case, you appreciate the job you've got as a stepping stone. You are grateful for the money that's coming in. You focus your ass off on all the things that you like about it. And you just are grateful for it that it's providing you the income while you set yourself up to create some sort of business that you love. And, you know, there's that saying, do what you love and the money will follow, which I think is for a select few very fortunate people, but do what you love, figure out how to monetize it and the money will follow. So you certainly can create lots of money doing what you love. I know plenty of people who do it, but you got to get into reality about what the income streams are going to be with that thing that you love to do. You can't, again, just start doing it and hope to get rich. And you talk about how when we're on the road of becoming rich and we're starting from a state of not so much abundance, a lot of times the people around us, they might start to judge us and we might start to actually become unpopular with the people around us. Why does this happen? Because we surround ourselves with people who are at the same level that we're at. And when we change who we're being, we're no longer in the tribe. And this makes people nervous because you're changing and it makes them feel insecure. You know, the main human fear is the fear of abandonment. So whether they realize it or not, they are fearing abandonment. And they're also being forced to look at themselves 
and see that perhaps they might be able to be doing better as well. And a lot of times this is not welcome information. (laughs) So, you know, if you're out there and you're doing the work and you're going to the seminars and taking the big, scary risks, it is so common for the people who are closest to us, actually. This is probably the biggest question I get. It's usually the people we love. It's usually the spouse who slathers you with their fears and worries and concerns, you know, how risky it is and how much danger you're putting yourself in instead of supporting you. And it's because of these things. It's because they stand the most to lose. They're losing you. When you change who you're being, you're basically killing your old identity and becoming somebody new. I mean, obviously you're the same person, but you really are killing off a part of yourself. And these people subconsciously don't want to lose that person. And they are also being made very uncomfortable by having to look at themselves in a new way. And using the term badass, Jen, you're really pushing people to get outside of their comfort zone. So why do people like to stay cozy in their comfort zone and have this fear of pushing harder and and doing something that's a little bit different? So what are some tips that we can get people to break free and become a badass? One of the biggest fears for human beings is the fear of the unknown, right? We are terrified of dying. Meanwhile, death could be like the most awesome thing ever, but we just fear it. We'll do anything not to die. So when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone to become a badass, it's all about unknown territory and we are terrorized. Some tips to get there are everything we've been talking about, you know, changing your focus, Reading and studying people who have done the impossible is a great way because it's just like, man, you know, me wanting to open my own restaurant or whatever your dream is, even as terrifying it is and all the details that go into that that scare the living crap out of you, it's like, we've put a man on the moon. Like, think of all the crap that person got flung at them for even saying that was possible. So surrounding yourself with stories and other people that will inspire you is huge practicing taking those little steps into the unknown and strengthening your confidence and strengthening your faith, being grateful, all of it, watching your negative stuff and turning it around. All of this stuff adds up. And I remember back in the day when I was just starting to change my life, I kept wanting to be like, yeah, 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 positive thinking. And, you know, I'm going to take baby steps and watch my words. And I felt like there's got to be more to it than that. There has to be some real hardcore mysterious thing that's like so hard and scary, but it really is all of this stuff. And the biggest one is the decision because the decision is what will allow you to take the risks you need to take and jump into the unknown. But that's really it. I got nothing else, (laughs) but I understand people wanting more, but that really is it. Well, Jen, to leave our listeners with some extra comfort, you talk about in the book how we have everything we need to get rich inside us right now, and the universe has our back. So can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Because the transformation you're seeking starts with your mindset, that's why you have everything inside of you, and that's why the universe has your back. Because the universe, as we said, like meditation connects you to your intuition, and that's where you get the big ideas And that just inner knowing of what you desire and what's possible for you. So that is the space where the superhero stuff happens in your life. That's all inside stuff. You know, money comes to us through other people and opportunity is through other people. But when your mindset is on board, you're able to connect to those other people and able to get into the flow with the money. So it really... You can do all you want on the outside and you can take all the money courses you want and, and you know make all the investments you want. But when your mindset is strong and expansive and as powerful as it can be, that's the real work that you need to do. And that's what's really going to make you successful because all of your actions start from where your mindset's at. So of course, it's about action, but you'll take much bigger actions when you've got a very powerful mindset. I love it. What a great way to wrap up. But before we let you go, we're going to do a rapid fire question round and just get to know you a little bit better. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So Jen, you talk a lot about gratitude. What are three things that you're most grateful for? My health, the people in my life, and my dog. What drives you? Adventure and variety. What are two things that you do every morning to get your day started? Drink coffee and take a walk. Did you have a nickname growing up? Stretch. 
something that you got in the last year that you can't imagine living without? A piece of luggage that I can fit tons in and slide in front of the seat in front of me on an airplane. Okay, Jen, that wraps up the rapid round. But our last question we're going to ask you, we ask all the guests, what is one challenge you have for our listeners? Something they can implement in the next week to upgrade their life and help them reach ultimate health? Do something that scares the living crap out of you that is in the direction of your dreams. Think about one thing that would massively transform your life and that you're really excited to bring into your life, whether it's meeting the person of your dreams or increasing your income or losing that weight and get specific about what it is. And then think of something that you've never done that you've been terrified to do that will get you in the direction of that dream and go do it. Awesome. So listeners, you need to get a copy of You Are a Badass at Making Money. How can everyone else get connected to you? They can go to my website, which is jensincero.com. And that's Jen. And then Sincero is spelled like sincere with an O on the end. So J-E-N-S-I-N-C-E-R-O.com. Jen, thanks so much for your time. This has been great. We wish you all the best with the book launch. The book is fantastic and uh, just want to congratulate you on it. Thank you so much. This was awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jen. So lots of takeaways, guys, from this awesome episode with Jen Sincero. We hope you guys get a copy of You Are a Badass at Making Money. It is definitely a keeper, something you need on your shelf. So for everyone listening, come on over to our group, ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash community. That's where the conversation happens in between episodes. We want to see you guys over there. Have a great week, you guys. Talk soon. Take care.